Let's give a, um, just a little introduction to the next uh, few lines. We were talking a lot about Shevet Dun, and then we get into Shaul and David and Esav. And uh, this, this is the way these things work, I think. That when we imagine um, the Hashras Hashchina in this world, um, the time of Mashiach, uh, we, we see it in our minds, I think, as a very pretty situation, pretty picture. Um, and it's not necessarily such a pretty picture. Uh, it's not an ugly picture, but it's a complicated picture. <laughs> pretty means um, snow white. Everything is perfect. Um, like Gan Eden, everything is perfect. But um, Gan Eden also had a Nachash walking around. So how, do, how did that fit into the Gan Eden experience to have a Nachash walking around? So the answer is that uh, perfection is complicated. And perfection has a Tzad HaToyv and a Tzad HaRa. But still Gan Eden is Gan Eden. But what happened after the Chet of the Eitz Hadas is that this Nachash went from being Bachutz to being Bifnim. So now it becomes sort of the snake within, which is not apparently not such a, uh, not as bad as it sounds, because when, when the Torah says <coughs> that it's mashma that there is a maila to have a yitzhara. And using that for Avad Hashem. So somehow or another, there's a koach hara, which also contributes to the, um, the overall picture of what it, Hashras, Hashchina, and Malchus is. So as much as we'd like to imagine a, uh, a sort of a perfect white situation, um, I don't think that that's what's, what it is. I think what, what we're going to learn here is that, and this is what, part of what we see from Shevet Dan and the Pesel Micha and what we've been speaking about for the last couple of weeks, you see that, that um, perfection is not all so simple. Do you know, um, I'm not promoting uh, this in any way, but it just even something like, um, you know, Loyal Leno, uh, uh, I just, good. <laughs> Sorry, I just wonder if it's like to have a seat. It gives me moral support. Even something like Eleno as as um, as horrible as as depression, uh, let's say, you know, this type of marashchira, uh, which 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 Chazal referred to in marashchira, marashchira means depression, but it actually refers to a marashchira, a certain bile, which is physically within the person, which creates a uh, you know, as the Rambam talks about marashchira, uh, it talks of, it creates some type of a. Uh, Anxiety and depression, and uh, but even even that um, can create a, a, a lot of color in in the world that wouldn't exist if a person is just you know everything is good. So uh, you know there's something there's something much more um, intriguing, perhaps, of, about the uh, not I'm not again I'm not uh, promoting uh, depression or but it's just 
<laughs> I'm saying that I'm, I'm, by uh, a non-professional experience, by non-professional experience, um, depressed people like to be depressed. It's not like if you uh, say to them, here, I've got a way for you to get out of depression. They don't necessarily want to get out of depression. Their world is much more interesting than the world of the non-depressed person. <laughs> Fascinating, you know, what's seeing and sensitive. It's, it's, it's like being out of drug. So um, when we talk about the, 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 um, the ultimate hashras uh, hashkina, shehi malchus, um, we're no longer talking about a perfect Snow White situation. We're not necessarily talking about a very pretty picture, keep shutai, the postures of Lavan, but Lavan meaning the color of Lavan. But we're, we're talking about something which is complex and complex. So um, here, here's where we come into this. Um, the, this is really posh, but if, if you want to see it, uh, Reb Nachman uh, spells this out in the Kutei Halachis and in Precious Kutas. He says, he says something very, uh, very intriguing. He says that there were two uh, really big mistakes by really big people in history. Uh, one mistake was, which we're just uh, learning about now, is Yitzchak thinking Asa is a tzaddik. Kitzayit b'fi. It's almost built a move on. Because he feeds him. Somehow or another, he, um, he, he saw Tzaddik there. And everybody's heard every part on the subject, but today we're going to learn the Abbas. <laughs> that, that was one, like, a big mistake, which caused a lot of damage, by the way. It wasn't, it wasn't a, uh, it, was, it was a mistake of biblical proportion, because it was because of that, that that not just Yaakov had to run away from Esau, but it's because of that that um, the Jews are running away from the Goyim for all of all of history because Esau's son is Yaakov. It was a mistake of seeing Esau as something that he, Lachara, was not. Um, so that's the one mistake in history. Lesser known, but just as, as important, is you have here in Shmuel Aleph, where Shmuel Hanavi, who at this time was a new Navi. He was a rookie Navi. And he had a Navua that the Ben Yishai is going to be the Melech in Shmuel of Tezayin. And it came, came the most, as you know, the most um, unobvious of the Bnei Yishai was the one that Shmuel thought should be the Melech Yisrael. He was the Roet son. Vayomer Shmuel a Yishai, Heitamu an arm, Vayomer Oit Shai, Heitamu an arm was a question. That's, that's, all, that's all your kids, why? I don't, I'm not feeling, I'm not feeling Malchus here. <laughs> but the sons of Bnei Yishai, these were, you know, lawyers, doctors, chashu of people. Vayomer Oit Shar Hakotan. I do have another little guy. Vihine Roya Vatsoim. You know, want to see him too? What does this remind you of, by the way? Is this all the brothers? <laughs> In this? Ah. Uh, <laughs> Yosef, Binyamin. This is, this is it? This is all you have? So there's something unobvious about what I'm looking for. Something which is unimaginable about what I'm looking for. Vayomer Shmuel, Yishai Shilcha, Vikachenu kilai nasayv ad boyu poy. Go send a messenger and bring this little rowate zone here, uh, the little shepherd kilai nasayv ad boyu poy. He's got to be here. By Yislach vayeviyehu. So they bring David into the base Shmuel. Vhu ad moini ad moini. He's he's a red. <laughs> he's a red. Who's I mean. old enough to know what a red means? <laughs> he's a red. <laughs> yeah. But who had money? Im yefei naim, the toiv roi. Well, he's an admoidi. Shmuel says this reminds me of Esau. 
Yifei Elayim, well, how did that get there? The Yifei Elayim, you know, the eyes are the windows to the soul. But Toi Vroi, it looks good. By Yomer Hashem, and Hashem says so, so Shmuel, that at this point, and by the way, this is very interesting, because if, if you look in the uh, Tanakh, there's a pay right here in the middle of the Pasuk, it's very, uh, which means that it's a psukh, there's a space in, in, the, in the actual cloth. It's so unusual, like, there's a, whoa, something happened. Something happened. I have a stira. I have a kasha. I know that it's not the other sons of Yishai. I know this is the kid, but who had mighty? But Yefei Nai. So Shmuel, um, at this point, because I'll speak out, it's even clear the the mikra. Shmuel says, "Now oh, this is this is this is wrong. Who had mighty?" And the, the psucha was that Shmuel's hachlata was that this cannot be the Melech Yisrael. This David cannot be the Melech Yisrael. There's no way there's going to be an mighty. Which is an ace of the Zach, and mighty anger, the klipas klipas endoy, klipas endoy, who am I like? No way that he's going to be. Now, uh, just let's let's take a, a second look over here for a second. What was the problem with Shaul? The problem with Shaul is uh, too much rachamim, so too much mesitra diyamina, too much chesed. He didn't want to kill the Amalek. So what are you bringing me, a polar, a polar opposite here, an admoidi? Shmuel says to Hashem, Psucha, here's the pain. Vayoy ber Hashem, and Hashem says, Kum mishachehu kizehu. A beautiful passage. Kum mishachehu kizehu. It's a beautiful passage just in the language of it. So here we have so such an important pasuk, a pivotal pasuk in the, in the history of the Jewish people. I think Shmuel's mistake was the same as Yitzhak's mistake, but Havuch, <laughs> the other way around. So Yitzhak saw didn't see the Edmo. He saw Kilu. He didn't see the Efeinaim either. He didn't see. Period. What he what he what he saw was Kitzayid Befiv, which we need to explain. That's what he saw. He saw this toy of Sa'id Befiv. And his contradiction was Sa'id Befiv, first of all, I brought a food. And second of all, Rashi says, Edgar and Vietal and Chacha, Eich Ma'asr Nes Ha'melech. How do you take my He's asking Shiloh, he's talking. You know, he's talking the talk. So he saw the Sa'id Befiv, mistake of historical proportion. Shmuel says, learning from forefather Yitzchak, Shmuel says, no, 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 I'm not going to be fooled. This is an admighty. I don't care what kind of eyes he has. And I don't care how, what, how he talks. And I don't care. He's an admighty. Admighty cannot be the Melech Yisrael. We don't want an Abbalik here as a Melech Yisrael. We don't want somebody who's a killer. Psucha. <laughs> this is an open question. Yoimer Hashem says the Torah, Kum b'shachayu kizehu. Yeah, I, I just want to point out what this farm say here. Just to make lahatimas um, adover. If you, if you take um, the exact words here, uh, David, my mathematician, is not here. An moini im yefei enayim. That that phrase, an moini im yefei enayim, which is kind of an inherent uh, contradiction right there, is uh, comes out to four ninety six. Does somebody want to check that, or you want to just trust me? Yeah, exactly. No koilo, no hosefos, no misperkatan, no, no, nothing. Moini imifei enayim is 496, which is the gematria of Malchus. Uh, Malchus is 496, that's easier to figure. Malchus, uh, Moini it, imifei enayim didn't just mean that David Abelech was the Melech Yisrael. Gematria. It means that the gematria of Malchus is at Moinim Yefei Enayim. The Mahus of Malchus is a contradiction of, of like, a diametrical contradiction of, of it's a dichotomy. At Moinim Yefei Enayim, but that's what Malchus means now that we're up to David Amelech and not up to Adam Arisha. Why? Because Malchus is the pshat that uh, we're not talking about the malchus of David Amalek, we're talking about the malchus of the Shechina. 
So we're talking about the Balchus of Chesed, Gur, Tiferes, Netzach, Hoi, Yisoy, Balchus. So we're talking about where the Shechina hits the ground. That's what Balchus is. That's the, that's the, the lowest of the spheros and the most real of the spheros. Ki Balchus Shalchahi. Ki Eid Melech Loi Ab. Because you can't, because Hashem is not a Melech unless this whole world is involved in the Balchus. Whole world is involved in the Malchus. The whole Adam is involved in the Malchus. So Malchus perforce is going to be a very complicated situation. If, if you're talking about um, Malchus Bashabayim, Malchus over the Malachim, there's nothing complicated about that. There's nothing understandable about it for us because we're complicated. But it's not complicated. It's it's Nucky. It's Lavan. It's 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 all snow white up there. It's perfect. It's nice. No. <laughs> White angels with wings. It's beautiful. <laughs> but when we're talking about Malchus in this world, start thinking about it. Think about Russia. Think about Iran. Think about even Israel. Think about the United States. Think about what it would mean for Mashiach to come right now. Well, everybody becomes a Malach. Think about Gogu Bogo. We're talking about a complicated Malchus. We're complicated. We're complicated people. I mean, even individuals, even small things are complicated. Kabbalah, wars and countries, and it's, it's very complicated. So, so the, when we're talking about the Malchus, we're talking about Edmoni Imyafei Enayim. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about a certain vigilance and a certain, um, you know, a certain toughness, a certain Edoim, which is part of the... Uh, so we, we spoke in Reb Tzadok, uh, a few days ago about Uvo Behar Seyer, that before Bat and Tyra, Kanish Baruch Hu was Kaviachal hovering over Asa. It's, it's not like Yitzchak hovered over Asa. So here's the two, the two mistakes, and, and we need to analyze that also. I'll tell you something very awesome. Swarb says, Swarb this is the. Well, the second half after the Psucha changes everything. This you're talking about Malchus Yisrael. This is my Malchus. This is the this is the right now the Shkitas Begalusa. Shaul is up to the Sitra de Yabida of Chesed. We we have we have a lot of word. This is the Habtakas Adidim that I've been waiting for. Kizehu. Tell you something about Zehu. This is what the Swarb say. I saw this in the Parshas, Mishpatim, Kishiyoyber, Ki Hu Zeh. The Zeh and Hu have the same Gematria, 12-12. That's easy, right? 7 5 is 12. Hey, Vav Aleph, 12. Zeh, Ki Zeh, Hu. It's not Ki Zeh, Hu. It's two words. Ki Zeh, Hu. Hainu. Say the Svarim, that what you see is what you get. Meaning, his tochos kabara. Kize, you see, you see that? Uh, this, who? <laughs> That's his obek. Meaning, <laughs> so what's his obek? What's the obek here? What, what, what is this his obek? His obek is, is that Bodhi or is that Bodhi because you pay your night? Yeah. <laughs> Kize, that stira, who? It's, it's, this, this is the 496 of Malchus. Yafa, I'm sorry, and mighty if you pay night. This is the this is the Malchus Kizehu. Oh, just while we're while we're uh, dealing with it, you need a whisper like um, David Abelach, where he appears through Tanakh, is becoming the Melech Yisrael, building, uh, struggling with wars, and he can't build the base of Midrash because. Uh, he has too much blood on his hands, so he's struggling with this Edmoidi Vyafa Edayim all through Tanakh until you get to Divrei Hayabim, where and in Tehillim, where it's Mizmar Ladovid, and it's talking about that Mizmar Shir Chanukas Habayis Ladovid, that wherever in the finished, in the end, in the retrospect of David, um, David is always spelled, if you look at uh, Divrei Hayabim, Dalad Vav Yud Dalad, he is mostly. Yud al Shaboy, like, like uh, some say it was even the Yud of Sarai. Went to Yoshua, went to David and Divrei Hayom. 
David with a yud is gematria zehu twenty four. The home. Right? Don't take my word for it. Think no, four. Yeah. <laughs> David is fourteen, and then yud. Is there you go. That yud twenty four zehu. So so the Shlomo Lamelech was was also complicated. <laughs> also complicated. This is what it is. Complicated, but but not as complicated, not as forthright complicated as as uh, David Abelach was. So um, this is this is Reb Tzadik in his Reb Tzadik, This is his. By the way, this is his subject, his theme. His uh, this is, this is his contribution. I believe if I'm allowed to say this is his contribution to 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 Yiddishkeit to the world in in that. Um, don't be so quick to uh, to judge looking for simple things that we're always looking for because there's a behind <laughs> the, the, the mechanics of this is very. Uh, I'm not I'm not a uh, motion knows these things, but uh, the body has to have a certain amount of bacteria and a certain amount of right. This is a bad thing. We take too much antibiotics, right? What what happens? Just explain. It. That's right. They give you probiotics. <laughs> you can kill the bad bacteria. You can kill the good bacteria, but you need. Your food so what in the world is good bacteria? Yeah. Right. What's good bacteria? No, so we're carrying around, carrying around the trillions of them. Hmm? Bacteria in the gut produce the vitamin K that you need to, to, to digest. Yeah. Some food, right? So you need some of that. You need some of that at in you, right? If you become if you become too clean and too perfect, then you have to live in a bubble. Also, they're discovering too much antibiotics causes the bad bacteria to mutate and uh, start to eat the. And we have all these bacteria that are no longer treatable or very difficult to treat. Right. So it's a two-edged sword. I remember this fellow, there was a fellow in Yeshiva who was like a huge lantern, so he uh, happened to be a big lantern in the top So um, he, he once heard the story about good bacteria, bad bacteria, so he decided the whole time he has strep throat, he's not taking a shower. <laughs> like, we should get some bacteria rolling over here. Let's get, let's get uh, <coughs> Okay, so you got to know how this stuff works. But the, the point is, that in, in, in the in the whole um, in the whole bria, like the uh, malchus needs and money VFA and a nine. That's malchus of, of four ninety six kize who. Tell me, tell me a little thing here. Eat yogurt. Hmm? Eat yogurt. Yeah, eat yogurt. Probiotics. Good bacteria. You know the famous uh, Gemara Brachos, famous story, which is so, uh, you know, you talk about for, for the rest of our lives, is the story of the Hadocha of Rabbi Gamliel. Rabbi Gamliel was a Nasi, Yisrael. This was the Chalshalusa de Gamliosa, the Gemara calls it. This was not, this were the grandchildren of Hillel. Hillel and Rabbi Gamliel, and then Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, and then Rabbi Gamliel, Rabbi Shimon, and Rabbi Shimon Gamliel, and Rabbi Shimon. Gamliel Akadon, that was the third. So there was like six, altogether, six generations in the Gamli, Shalshalasa the Gamliasa. So uh, this was, um, it was so powerful, the Gamliel family, that, Rabbi, or, that the Romans, uh, the Romans uh, forbade them from becoming the CA Yisrael. Uh, the, the reason was that uh, this, was, this was something Vespasian did already. That he said, no, I don't want anybody from the family of Hillel here because the, the big fear of the Romans in history was that there was going to be some kind of a merit or a rebellion. They hated rebellions, you know. There's rebellion in Judea. That was that was their call for war of the Chorb base of English. They couldn't stand rebellion to them. Hillel, interestingly, represented Malchus. Understand, by the way, from a deeper point of view, that uh, the Romans were Edoi. So then, you know, there's rebellion in Judea, um, and they're, one of their first things to do, one of their first acts of, of Congress, was to get rid of the Shalshalasa, the chain of Hillel, which was called Shalshalasa de Gabliasa, because they were, he came from David HaMelech. Um, Hillel traced himself to David HaMelech, and they were Malchai Yisrael. To, and, to a certain extent, they have all the dinim of Malchai Yisrael, but they had many dinim of Malchai Yisrael. It's just important to note that the way the Gemara looked at the Nesia Yisrael, Whereas Malchai Yisrael and Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai um, was not from that Shalshalas Bafla. Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai, his father was a Balabas. Right? He, didn't, uh, he didn't come from that. He couldn't trace himself to, to uh, 
to David Amelech, you know, no morale there, no Rashi, nothing. He said the Rebbe it was a great, great leader, one of the greatest leaders of the, the history of the Jewish people, but not a, not from Malchus based David. He wasn't from the Malchus based David, as were not the uh, Chashmonoim in, in, the, in the generation earlier. Where Malchus based David, Hillel was Malchus based David, and Vespasian. Vespasian ushered him and his family to be Malchus because they saw that as a merit. We're the Malchus, you're not the Malchus. This is a typical, um, historically, it, it, it's what happened, and it makes sense, and uh, it makes perfect sense from a Torah point of view also. Hence, the Gemara says, Halachi Yisab Sarnas Yaakov. So, um, so here's Rabbi Gamliel. Rabbi Yochan ben Zakkai says, Vespasian says, okay, I'm the genie, make a wish. He says, Tain liyavna v'chachamel, get a redactor for Rabbi Tzadok. Hakoyen, not this one, the original, um, and Tachser Atara de Shalshalta de Gamliosa, return the crown, <laughs> return the crown of the Gamliel family. Um, let them be. You're going to destroy the base of Egypt. You're going to destroy Yerushalayim. You're going to kill a million people. Bach Patlacha, the Rebbe Gamliel should be the should be the Nasi Yisrael the Belach. Let him be. Give, give us Yavda, and he'll be in Yavda, and he'll be there, and I retire, which is what he did. He exactly retired at that moment. He was no longer in Nasi Yisrael. He went to uh, um, um, he, went, he went to a different city. He didn't want to compete with with um, Baruchai, I'm sorry. He went to Baruchai. He didn't want to compete with Rebbe Gamliel. Gamliel went to Yavne, and hence the Torah was rebuilt in Kala Yisrael through Rebbe Gamliel. A whole generation through Rebbe Gamliel. Rebbe Gamliel had the shita, as everybody knows, <laughs> had the shita of Call me Shane, and I tell you, I could borrow Loy Connais, the base of Mandrish. Kizehu. Kizehu. It's like an interesting. So you think about it. Why was he oiming on this? I mean, wasn't he oiming on the fact anybody doesn't put on the face of Rabbeinu Tamsfil? Well, does he have to be told? Why was this his Hagdara? It was. And many people, um, what does it mean to be Tocho Kabar? In other words, you, you have to walk the walk, talk the talk, you, 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 you live this. Uh, we don't want anybody in here that's um, du part sufi, that's hypocritical. We don't want that. And what came out was a lot, a lot of Talmidim that were standing outside. Uh, the the Swarm explained, uh, you know, how did the Shabra Pesach know who was uh, Tofu Kabaro or not Tofu Kabaro? It, it's not that. It's that It's that when the Shabra Pesach is standing here and says, if you're not Tofu Kabaro, don't come in. So everyone said, okay, I'm not Tofu Kabaro. <laughs> who's going who's gonna to be so bold as to say, I'm Tofu Kabaro? I'm walking into the base of Edmish. Okay, Yei Shabra, the Shabra Pesach must have been Elio Anavi, the Shabra Pesach must have been Anavi. A novi of some sort, you know, but what the fuck? I can see right here, uh, the, the guy at the door is asking everybody, are you Tofo Kabaro? <laughs> <laughs> the only people that are going to come in are the people that are not. True. <laughs> Human nature. Yeah. <clears throat> so, this is, this is interesting. Because of this, many people, even inside the base of Medrash, were becoming offended, Rabbi Yeshua amongst them. And, and uh, the Gemara has a whole story of uh, Kriyash, uh, Kri- um, Tfilis Arvis Rishus, Tfilis Arvis Choyva, the Gemara Brachas. Interesting unto itself, it's not our subject now, but um, he, he, was, he was throwing out, Zroik Maris will tell me to me, he was throwing out um, insults, <laughs> Kilu, I mean, I have a better way of saying offense. To the Talmudim that were inside, and these were the good guys. I would say my theory is maybe this is a simple shot, maybe this is the way you understand it. My theory is that look, if you're here, you have to be Tafel Kabaro. This wasn't two separate stories. This was a shita of Tafel Kabaro. You you have to be 100 percent integrity, and I don't want to hear, you know. Who said Tfilis Arvis Rishus? The Gemara says oh, everybody's quiet. <laughs> Is that it? Uh, uh, inside has to be like the outside. Outside has to be like the inside. Everything has to match. So the Shita of Rabbi Gabriel. Okay, we all know the story that the Gemara says that uh, it got out of hand. Already three cases where Rabbi Gabriel insulted Talmidei Chachavim, 
and they did a hadatha. They, they pushed him away. They impeached him from his deceus of, of Yisrael. He was no longer a Rosh Hashiva of Yavne, and as soon as he took away the sil silku shaymer ha-pesach, they took away the shaymer ha-pesach, packed, packed, everything's packed. Nisrabu, sheva be'oi safsalom, yishara. All of a sudden it became Bir Yeshiva. Like, all of a sudden there's like thousands of people sitting in the base medrash. And Chol Shaddai to Rabbi Gawil. Rabbi Gawil said, oh yeah, this is a Felicia Sadas. Dilma Banati Torah be Yisrael. Maybe I held back Torah from Kla Yisrael. So he had a Nevoah said, no, no, you did good. But the Gemara says it wasn't a real Nevoah, it was just to make him feel better. He was Manayak Torah be Kla Yisrael. What's the... Um, he wanted everything to be perfect. Exactly right. He was missing the Edom well component. Well said. He was missing the Edom component. Oh, he was missing the Edom component. Yeah. He, he wanted it to be Snow White. He wanted, he wanted it to be that uh, your Tocha was my borrow. Also true. Not, but not so, so interesting as a sort of a sideline of the story is the Gemara starts off that the, 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 the troublemaker here, Ahu Talmita, there was a, it's a young Talmud, a young Talmud. Was who chose Harris for shoes for shoes? The one, the the, the uh, you know the, uh, the troublemaker. What's the word? The, huh? Instigator. Yeah, the instigator, the commander. <laughs> who who is it? Where is it? the end of the whole story? Who was the one who caused all these problems? Like some Talmud who was making making Saris uh, over here. Like he said, Rishos, He said, Chova. He's like, who is it? From Shimon Bar Yochai. This is not a. This is not a. You know. A, Troublemaker kid. Searching by your highest. It's Sadiq Ador, the Gadol Ador, the 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 Ador. But he was only good as young. Oh, he wasn't so young. He was young. Well, that was the 30s. The truth is, it was before the uh, before the Ba'ara. It, it was before the Iskalos of the of the Zayar. Before the Iskalos. But still, the Pshat of Searching by your high represents the Dister. Of, of, of this world, of the Nister of the Torah, of the Nister of every person. So it was Rav Bar Yochai. The Gemara says at the end, oh, my who the Gemara said, and now we're going to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> that's, not, that's not what's going on over here. What's going on over here is that the Gemara, is, the, the, the Chachmei Talmud are scratching their head. They're saying, like, what's the shot in this whole story here? If you're looking at, at this whole story of Rav Gabriel being the Nasi, and then, and then Rav Yeshua being the Nasi, and then there's a Shabbos Shalmi. They're both in the sea and working together. You take one week, I'll take another week. What is going on over here? This is the Galushan of the Gemara to ask this question. Is who was this Talmud? Who is it? Who is it? Zeh who? <laughs> who is this? This person. The answer is a Rosh Hashanah. It was we're talking about, and, and by the way, that question was asked 100 years later. Look at the Gemara. Uh, to try to get to the essence of this Story. This is not a political, you know, the politics of Panovich. That's not what's going on over here. What's going on here is the Obek Hadover is that Tocho Kibaro is not a Hashkafa of Malchus. And this is what Rav Bar Yochai was trying to bring out. Rav Shimon Bar Yochai was, was, was creating mild irritation in the Mesa Medrash because of the, 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 the whiteness of it. Because of the perfection of it, because of the integrity of it, because there was no and mighty be a fey night. There was only a fey night without a mighty. Rabbi, Rabbi Nachman claims that he's, he was the giver of. Uh, also an mighty, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Rabbi Nachman was a red was was a red Andy, which he which he spoke about yeah. himself many times because he said he's the combination of uh, he, he's also a combination of Malchus. Who had a heart like Rav Nachman, but his chutzainus was a uh, okay. I'm not yeah. somebody who saw Rav Nachman painted a painted, painted a painting of him. So, hmm. Apparently, they know. I mean, he was young. He died. He was 32, 33. But uh, so he never had white hair. Anyway. But, uh, okay, uh, Rav Nachman was a different subject. But with that, the um. Uh, this has to do with everything. It has to do it's with Malchus. It has to do with Malchus Yisrael. I'm a like me who's a Ezehu. So okay. So so the what this this is the introduction. The introduction is the dichotomy of Malchus 
is is a is a complicated um, is a complicated idea, and it's an idea of both Edmoni. It's a mis- and, and even Yitzchak made this mistake, and even Shmuel Hanavi made this mistake. In other words, these were these were mistakes. Okay, we were saved by the Hashkocha Pratis in both cases, but these were mistakes. Um, which which how can we not make this mistake? How can we not make this mistake? So just one more to here. I don't want to. There's a difference. Let's. I mean, that's partial chatter. But there's a difference in the. The obik of the mistake of Yitzchak Avinu and Shmuel Hanavi. Same mistake, opposite ways around, but the same mistake, looking at one side, not looking at the other. Yitzchak was fooled by Kitai Befith. Shmuel was fooled by Edmoni. But what, what Shmuel didn't see was the Yefei Enai. What, what Yitzchak didn't see was the Edmoni. But like the Tzai Befiv was what threw him off, right? So it's very interesting that you, you, all of a sudden we have, if you think about this, um, you have like on the same level, it seems like is the Tzai Befiv and the Yifei Naib, those are the two missed, the two missed. I, I just want to say a, a Svar. That you know, first of all, I mean, Pashup Shat, I mean, Tzai Befi, what Asaph did. Asaph spoke a very holy language. It was an Edmoni. You know, I don't want to knock anybody, just a little bit, but uh, <laughs> I'll give you a bush. Like, I, I, you know, if you grew up in the, uh, in the 60s, so, um, like, you had. Uh, um, Let's say uh, Dylan, Bob Dylan. So it's considered almost like a lovey. His words, his poetry was very, very uh, spiritual. Deep. See, Eliezer's like, this is uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> two Eliezer's. <laughs> he was deep, he was spiritual, he was poetic, it was, uh, he was like the voice so, to a certain extent, I think. More than, you know, the other famous rock star. You know, it was like a, it was like a voice, the poetic voice of the, uh, him and like uh, Ginsburg, the, you know, that was, was a great poet. You know, they had it, it, something something very interesting here. Just a personal experience. You know, I had a long story. I had an opportunity to meet, um, have a meeting with actually, um, Dylan and Ginsburg, who was his killer Um And to, to to cut through the whole story, just to tell you something very passionate that. I was thinking that these were very deep spiritual people, like I don't know where they came from. And when I met them, I realized there's nothing deeper, there's nothing spiritual about them, they're just uh, the Duvalum. <laughs> that's, that's what I think. And uh, uh, Ginsburg uh, just died recently, He's, uh, I was a Shoi Chef Zachar, and uh, uh, when I met him, he was with his boyfriend. And there's nothing holy, there's nothing deep about these people altogether. But, um, they 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 knew how to they knew how to uh, they had a language of spirituality. It was almost a prophetic language. So it reminded me at the time of you know you know how they, they like you know in yeshivas let's say you could have a tabul chacham who could speak about uh, you know gaver chefsa bikanala bala mafreya and he could really talk about all this all this like really good raid um, and. So you know, you look at it and say, "Wow, this is like a serious lot to know, <laughs> you know, like a serious lot." But when you start, when you start to, you know, push it a little, there's nothing there. <laughs> nothing. It's it's right. Kitzai befit. It's just it's just diburi. Yeah. I said, you can you can learn to talk yeshivish. It's a language. There's even a book. <laughs> there's, a, there's a book to teach you how to talk yeshivish. Yeah. Yeah, like it was like what, you know. I mean, if you walk into a room, this is a real box of. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like if you if you think about those words, those are yeshivish words. Like this is like a really deep insight into the, uh, you know. It, but it, it's like the you know, like, it's like that famous story about the, you know the, the Zamorites who wanted to uh, somebody write a shidduch, you know, with a with a bas tavul chacham, but he had to go meet the tavul chacham to to see if he was right look after this bas tavul chacham. So somebody gave him an eight, said like you know. Um, you know, let let 
be mechabed, the future father-in-law, to say a Dvar Torah, and whenever he pauses, you just say, my nafkamina. <laughs> so, so the said the shver says to him, you know, so say, said, let me hear a little bit of Torah from you. So he says, well, maybe you say, and I'll, you know, I'll chime in because I, whatever city you're in, that's where I'm holding, you know. <laughs> so the so again, you know, so he starts to talk about a sugi and kutsha, but the, the kid is listening, listening. And he says, yeah, but my naf kamina. <laughs> wow, this guy is smart. <laughs> And this conversation went on to, for, for, for an hour, and, um, and at the end, the uh, Talmud won. He walks out, he says, like, he, he beat me like I talk to don't know at the end of the day. But after me, so, <laughs> and in the meantime, of course, the, you know, the Talmud was a shaita who didn't understand one word of what the... What the a, so sometimes, like, you know, with, um, you know, like, with the rain, you can do it. So this is the Taich, I believe, Kitzai Befi. I, I think the Kitzai Befi is that you can talk the talk, Anybody can talk the talk. It's very interesting. So this is this is like Yitzchak. I mean, if we're permitted to say, but I mean, the Torah says Yitzchak was fooled by Kitzayim Befiv. He, could, he couldn't imagine that the Ma'anaf Kavita wasn't real. This is obviously coming from a from a people have a spiritual language. People have a chachmah language. You you even in the secular world by by, by the guy people talk in a way that sounds like extremely intelligent. They're not really intelligent at all. They just have this way of talking. Which is very intelligent. This is this is the kitzai b'fi. It's very interesting. My wife says that by the way. She says she can oh, step yep. in. No, no, she can step in, in one of, any one of my meetings at any time. No problem. You don't have to know anything about it. Just say those words. Yeah, get all the right words. Oh. <laughs> you can get elected. You can get elected. You want to get the words? Uvda. Uvda. Evid. Evid. Yeah. That's a good example. Politics is a. Is a is a perfect example of Kitsai uh, Well, let's, let's just say a little tiger here about this. That the, 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 the Arizal says that Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Meir, you know, Rabbi Meir was a grandson of Nehron Kesar, of Nehron. And Rabbi Akiva was a, grand, a grandchild of Sisra. You know, two, two people that had dubious yichus. They were the ones, said Zayarizal, that had to be Masak and Tarish Peh. Because until that Tarish Peh was Kitsayid Befi, belonged to Esau. They had to take the Diburim of Esau, Kitsayid Befi, Eich Ma'asrin as HaMelach. They had to take the Diburim, um, and which was Minasaf of Malachutz of Esau, and be Masak in it to make it the deepest thing in the whole world. Dafke, Rabbi Kiva, and Rabbi Meir who were from the B'nai Esau, they were the B'nai Esau, they had to be Vesaki, the, the pet. So when we talk about the Tos of, of Yitzchak, comes out that it wasn't such a Tos. It was a Metzius of Tzayin B'feh, which is the Metzius of Tzayin B'feh, which is the Iker Obek of this world. Without Tzayin B'feh, we don't understand anything. So he saw it, he saw an ace of the racist the racious of Torah Shemapah, the Arizal says racious Goyim Habolek, that they are a real racious. This is, this is bringing out, like I said at the beginning, about like even negativity and depression, it has a color to it. So it has a color to it, it's not white, it's not binocular, it's, it's, it's colorful, it's a colorful world. The, the, he saw the Kitzai Befet, a racious of the, of the potential of Rabbi Akiva and Rabbi Meir. Bavalala right. It's Bavalala right. But this, this, this dichotomy that we're talking about is exactly the Abayni im Yifei which is the gematria of Malthus. Because that's what Malthus is. Malthus is Teresh Abapet. Teresh Abapet is Malthus. And that's David Abalach, David Abalach Mashiach, and this is Kizehu. The David with the Yud, with the Hesaf of the Yud, that's the Zehu. Okay. There's a uh, 60 minutes interview with Bob Dylan. A what? 60 minutes, Bob Dylan. Excuse me. <coughs> interview. 